This video is sponsored by Blinkist. Runic Dome. The Inuitak Atoll is a group of 40 low coral islands in the Marshall Islands of the Pacific Ocean. Among these is Runet Island. The island is home to a vast concrete structure that appears quite alien compared to its surroundings. Named the Runet Dome, or locally the Tomb, the structure measures 115 meters in diameter and its walls are almost half a meter thick. Throughout the 1940s and 50s, the U.S. detonated 67 nuclear explosions in the Marshall Islands as part of Operation Hardtack. These weapon tests resulted in many of the islands being scattered with contaminated materials, which locals feared may poison the ecosystem and do irreversible ecological damage. However, it was not until a few decades later, in the 1970s, that authorities made an effort to clean up the sites of the nuclear tests. Contaminated soil was scraped from the surface of six islands and deposited in a crater on Runet Island. The crater, which had been created by the 1958 cactus missile test, was eventually covered over with concrete in an attempt to contain the toxic waste. At the cost of $218 million, the Runet Dome was born. Some military personnel who took part in the cleanup operation claimed later in life to have developed illnesses due to the radiation they received. While many of those who have made this claim have fallen sick or developed cancers, the U.S. government denies responsibility. Runet Dome contains approximately 111,000 cubic yards of contaminated debris, and even some deadly plutonium-239, the isotope used in nuclear warheads, which has a half-life of 24,000 years and is known to cause lung cancer when inhaled. In recent years, rising sea levels and the low altitude of the dome have given cause for concern. The locals believe that the combination of these factors, and the fact that the concrete appears to be chipping and cracking, may lead to a devastating nuclear leak in the impending future. A 2013 report found that the 1970s cleanup of the islands removed just 0.8% of the total waste, and that the soil surrounding the Runet Dome is in fact more heavily radiated than that within. The locals, some of whom make their living by scouring the islands for scrap metals, know the island to be poisoned but there is no word for contamination in the local Marshallese language. While some campaign for a more thorough cleanup, many see this as futile, believing it is only a matter of time before the sea rises high enough to sweep the many tons of nuclear waste into the ocean. I know you enjoy my list videos, but what if you want more detail without sacrificing too much time? Perhaps you're researching abandoned nuclear sites and decide you want to know more about history's most famous nuclear disaster. That's why I recently listened to Chernobyl by Sergei Ploki on Blinkist. Chernobyl draws from newly opened archives to shed fresh light on the 1986 nuclear meltdown that shook the Soviet Union. I'm obsessed with the details of history, particularly the technical ones, and Blinkist helped me get straight to the key ideas, like the mismanagement and incompetence that pushed Unit 4's reactor to the brink of catastrophe and that the Soviet-made RBMK reactors contained a fatal design flaw that turned them into ticking time bombs. The Blinkist app enables you to understand the most important things from over 5,500 non-fiction books and podcasts in just 15 minutes. In the time it can take you to read one book, you can get key insights from many more. Click the link in the description to start a seven-day free trial and get 25% off Blinkist Premium. Next on my listening list is one of Elon Musk's recommended books, Superintelligence by Nick Bostrom. Superintelligence investigates how creating a machine more intelligent than a human would change humanity. For Superintelligence, I definitely plan to use the new Blinkist Connect feature that allows every Blinkist premium plan to be shared by two different accounts. It's no additional cost, and it's free to the person you invite for as long as you're sharing it with them. Blinkist Connect allows me to share titles like Superintelligence with one of my friends, and we can have an informed discussion about the future of AI when they're done listening. Support Dark5 and click the link in the description to start a 7-day free trial and get 25% off Blinkist Premium and enjoy two memberships for the price of one. City 40 
In the Shelyabinsk region of Russia is the town of Ozersk, better known to some by its codename, City 40. City 40 is a closed city, with no unauthorized access and heavy travel restrictions for its 80,000 or so residents. Founded in 1947, following the Second World War, it's the birthplace of the Soviet nuclear weapons program. City 40 rarely appears on maps, and has always been surrounded by armed guards and barbed wire fencing. Until 1954, residents were forbidden to leave or contact their families and friends. They didn't even exist on the official census. The Mayak plant, around 8 kilometers from City 40, is one of the most extensive nuclear facilities in the Russian Federation. It covers an area of approximately 90 square kilometers, while employing around 15,000 people. By historical accounts, the Mayak plant produced vast quantities of weapons-grade nuclear materials at a rapid rate and with disregard for appropriate safety measures. As a result of this early plutonium manufacture, City 40 and its surrounding region have been called one of the most polluted places on Earth. In 1957, an unsafely stored tank of liquid nuclear waste exploded at the Mayak plant, contaminating thousands of square kilometers. This single catastrophic incident, known as the Kishtin disaster, released more nuclear contamination into the atmosphere and surrounding area than the Chernobyl incident. Although it generated an immense radioactive cloud that passed over numerous industrial and populated areas, an attempt to cover up the Kishtin disaster prevented the world from discovering the truly terrifying scale of the damage done until 1980. In City 40, much of the population received severe, long-term radioactive burns to their skin. Some of the local evacuations took two years to complete, giving the radiation plenty of time to do its damage. The Ciudad Nuclear Cuba has long been associated with nuclear tensions, but not just for the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis. In the 1970s and early 80s, Cuba worked with the USSR in an attempt to build two nuclear power plants in southern Cuba in the town of Jaragua. Each of these reactors would have produced enough energy to cover 15% of Cuba's power requirements. Their plans also included the construction of a dedicated town for the workers, which would be based on Pripyat, the city built beside the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. This town was dubbed La Ciudad Nuclear, which translates to nuclear city. Home to 30,000 residents, many of whom worked on constructing the power plants, La Ciudad Nuclear became a society in its own right. Locals enjoyed a period of prosperity, as the construction of the plants brought wealth and economic growth, but this wasn't to last. Construction was delayed for some years, and when the Soviet Union collapsed in the early 90s, the government pulled funding for the nuclear plants, even though much of the work had already been finished. The plants at La Ciudad Nuclear still stand incomplete, a mass of vast concrete slabs and twisted, rusting wires. Some consider them a monumental reminder of a brighter future that could have been, but many others are pleased that the reactors were never used. This is because reports estimated the likelihood of a nuclear accident at the plant to be 15 times greater than the risk of one happening in a similar plant in the U.S. To this day, the strangeness of the sight of a crumbling and partially abandoned city with Soviet architecture on the idyllic Cuban coast draws numerous tourists and urban explorers. Hanford, USA The Hanford site in the U.S. state of Washington was established in 1943 and was home to the world's first full-scale plutonium production reactor. A vital part of the Manhattan Project, the infamous nuclear weapon development program, Hanford is responsible for producing the deadly plutonium used in the world's first atomic bomb, as well as the Fat Man bomb that was dropped on Nagasaki. As a result of Cold War fears and geopolitical pressures, the site was later expanded into one of the most extensive facilities of its type. In 1963, the U.S. government determined that national plutonium stocks were large enough that the plant should be shut down. The reactors were to be entombed to contain the residual radiation. 
This containment process was not completed until 2022, by which point the damage had already been done. Many of the precautions and safety measures taken during the early days of plutonium production had been dangerously inadequate, and significant damage was done to the surrounding environment and its inhabitants. It came to light that the operators of the plants had also knowingly dumped used water containing long-life isotopes into the Columbia River, where it contaminated fish stocks, relied upon significantly by Native American communities. Residents of communities situated downriver and downwind from Hanford received dangerous doses of radiation poisoning, prompting the growth of cancers and thyroid diseases. As a result, in 2015, the U.S. Department of Energy paid out more than $8 million in damages and spent more than $60 million on legal fees. Two years later, the DOE announced that a tunnel containing rail cars of radioactive materials had been breached at the Hanford site, and local evacuations were ordered. Despite now being decommissioned and largely empty, and despite some cleanup efforts, the Hanford site retained its deadly reputation. The Polygon In northeastern Kazakhstan sits what was Soviet Russia's primary facility for testing nuclear arms. It is officially known as the Semipodolinsk test site, but is more commonly referred to as the Polygon. Between 1949 and 1989, the Soviet Union carried out 456 nuclear tests at the Polygon, and did so with reckless disregard for the safety of the local people and the well-being of the surrounding environment. Except for the U.S. Nevada test site, there's believed to be no location on Earth that has suffered more nuclear explosions than the Polygon, and the scars can still be seen today. The site was chosen because the area was officially considered to be uninhabited. However, it was in fact home to a few thousand individuals and their livestock, and was also situated dangerously close to the city of Samipatolinsk. Some believe this may have been a deliberate move by Soviet officials, another sinister layer in their nuclear experiment. Today, all that stands on the polygon are angular concrete structures and flooded bunkers, some showing signs of blackening from high temperature blasts and even melted concrete. When the site was formally closed in 1991 and opened to scientific study, the horrors of its history came to light. Since then, Kazakh experts have estimated that 1.5 million people were exposed to radioactive fallout over the years that the facility was operational. Many local Kazakhs have genetic abnormalities and radiation-related mutations resulting from their mothers having been exposed to the fallout while pregnant. In response to the findings of the many studies carried out at the Polygon, a secret multinational team of scientists and engineers performed a cleanup operation. The team worked to secure the massive quantities of leftover plutonium waste into the tunnels of the surrounding mountains where the local farmers, who have endured decades of nuclear neglect, still graze their livestock. Let me know in the comments if there are other abandoned places in the world you want me to explore. As always, thank you for watching Dark 5. Like this video and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond.